Good day. Someone told me that you're a friend of Jonas's, the young cabin boy who's gone missing. That's right, yeah. Are you looking for him? Yes. Your captain asked me to go and find him. Happy to hear he's taking the disappearance seriously. What can I do for you? When did you last see him? Two days ago, in the evening. We went to have a drink in the tavern. Jonas, Lauro, and myself. Did anything seem out of the ordinary? Was he troubled? Maybe a tad troubled. Like he was somewhere else. Why would that be? Give me your best guess. Boy, I haven't the faintest idea. What does Jonas do in his free time, when you're on land? He just hangs around here or there. You know the cabin boys don't have half a sailor's wages. And when evening comes, we usually go down the tavern with good old Lauro. Did he ever have one too many? Never. He sips his pint like it was bad medicine. One drink lasts him the whole night. Do you think he could have made himself any enemies? I wouldn't think that for a moment. Jonas has a good heart, and he steers clear of trouble and troublemakers. Does he know anyone in Serene? No one, far as I know. I don't know where to start with this. Do you have any idea? No. Lauro won't stop telling anyone who will lend him an ear that the boy was carried off by thugs. And you don't believe him? I like Lauro, don't get me wrong, he's like a brother. But to be honest, he drinks a little more than he should. The itch for a drink gets us all, but to him more than others, and when you drink too much, the imagination wanders. Here, yesterday, it was me who tied one over, and I thought I heard Jonas's voice by the canal. I called back to him, as you'd guess, but then nothing. Drink. It blurs the senses. I need to be going. Farewell. Day, sailor. I've been told that you know the missing cabin boy well. Is that right? You're talking about Jonas? You bet your stars I know him. But like I've been crying to the nine deaf winds. He didn't go missing, he was taken. Were you a witness to the event? Yes, I was. Even though I'd had a few tumblers in the belly, I hadn't yet lost my head. The other day, in the tavern, I saw him talking to a well-dressed man, surrounded by some other sly ruffians. And then when we left, him and I, Flavia left a little earlier, you understand? Well, those brutes were there, waiting for him. They just up and took him like that. Grabbed his arms and puff. Gone. Vanished. Why didn't you intervene? <sighs> I tried to, believe me. But my legs betrayed me. Wavering they were and I fell into the gutter. Did you report this to the captain? Unfortunately not. I know all too well what weight my words carry. Even Flavia treated me like a drunken fool. And the captain? No, not telling him that. I still have some pride left, you get me? Why would anyone want to snatch a mere cabin boy? How would I know? Jonas is a gentle boy who keeps his head down. <sighs> You think my story is nothing but mess too, don't you? It's just that I can't imagine a gang of thugs hoping to get a ransom for a cabin boy. Thank you, Lara. I need to be going.
Hello again. Well, no. Did you find him? No. But I'm not giving up hope. Did Jonas seem troubled to you? The night he disappeared? Maybe. For sure he wasn't his usual self. Do you know what was on his mind? No. No idea. Did anyone else see the kidnapping? There was still a small crowd in the tavern. B but outside, I seem to recall that regular being there. We played cards with him from time to time. The kind of fellow who plays from morning to night time to be that skilled. But now and again he comes out. When nature calls, you know. I kind of remember his face being there. Thank you, Lara. I need to be going. Strange story, this is. Something isn't right here, I can feel it. We need to lift the veil on this. Tavern keeper. I see you're back. Can I pour you something this time? Someone told me about one of your faithful clients. A big gambler, it would seem. I see. An able-bodied man. Passes his time lightening the pouches of sailors coming through. Where might I find him at this time? Here. He would never give away his chair at his table. I'm looking for a nought. A young cabin boy who's been missing roll call for two days now. A nought, you say? That's not a lot to go on. There are quite a few that come to my tavern. According to one of his fellows, he would have been taken right here. A kidnapping. In my establishment. You surely jest. At least I hope you do. I would have noticed. That doesn't hold water. Anything else? I need to be off. Farewell. Goodbye. <laughs> Who are you? I don't recognize you. Am I in your debt? No. Have no fear about that. It's for a different reason that I am here. I'm looking for a nought that disappeared two days ago, after visiting this establishment. A young cabin boy. Two members of his crew accompanied him. Yes, that does ring a bell. I've played with the three of them. Tell me what happened that evening. A rich merchant came in, with a band of strong arms. The kind of men you can round up for a few coins, if you catch my drift. They exchanged words with the cabin boy. The kid was defensive, not sitting pretty. And then they finally left. And after that? It just so happens that I did go out for a breather. I needed some fresh air. And I think I might well have seen those same men grab him. But that was none of my business. I wouldn't have thought that they were kidnapping him, if that's what it was. They weren't particularly rough with him. What can you tell me about the boy? How was he that night? He seemed rather nervous, as if he was worried about something. Didn't feel like playing that, I remember. And he must have been right to be nervous, if he's disappeared. Who was the rich merchant, do you think? A jilted lover? A moneylender? No, sir. You are in luck. It so happens that I know the man. It was Sir Fontaine, that merchant. Where can I find him? He has a house in the wealthy boroughs, 
just off the canal. A stone's throw from the Tulemi Embassy. Thank you. You've been immensely helpful. This man is completely owned by his love for the game. Do you think we can trust him? What would he gain from lying? I have no idea. But what would any wealthy merchant gain from holding a penniless child? Might I help you, sir? I would like to have a word with Sir Fontaine. He is absent, but the lady of the house could certainly receive you. Enter, please. Oh, I know you. I've seen you at court. You are Lord de Sade. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit, Excellency? I would like to have a word with your husband. He is not here, but perhaps I could be of help. It concerns a delicate matter. We're looking for a missing cabin boy. According to witnesses, he had an argument with your husband before being taken. I see. I am afraid that you have been misled. You seem to have come to the wrong conclusion. The cabin boy you speak of was not taken. He has simply returned home. Excuse me, but I'm not sure I understand. Don't you see, Your Excellency? We got our son back. I'm very surprised. Several witnesses confirmed that your... son had a fight with your husband, and that his men escorted him from the tavern using force. If he had joined your husband willingly... Witnesses? In a tavern? And you choose to believe these drunkards over a respectable family? These witnesses are all in agreement, and it's their testimonies that have led me to your doorstep. My son was probably shocked to have found us. My husband and the other men might have simply had to carry him. A gesture that your drunkards must have misunderstood. What was your son doing on a naught ship? Why would they have taken him? It is what they do. Through pacts and contracts, they steal away young children from their mothers. What are you talking about? I would have thought that a legate would know these things. But it is true that you are young and inexperienced. It seems that you have been protected from the turpitudes of our own nation and their terrible allies. This horrible, constant ransoming that they put us through. But I will not say another word. You will have no trouble verifying the details now that you know what to look for. Where might I find your son now? I cannot say, Excellency. You must understand why. Until the Norts have set sail, we live in fear they will take him back from us. This pact? It sounds like some fear-inducing story. The Norts wouldn't be the first to recruit through dubious means.
Captain, sir, we were given orders to wait here with the merchandise. You're going to have to wait. We need to find a way to clear the access to the warehouse. Sir, are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. I'm still without news of my cabin, boy. But we will have to do without. I spoke with a woman who told me she was the mother of the cabin boy. She claims that her son was taken from her. Taken? Her son is sea gifted. His parents were required to give him up, to honor the terms of a contract. A contract? But what kind of contract are we speaking of? A commercial contract. In exchange for services rendered by the Nauts, some families seed more than gold. In some cases, nations even trade some of their subjects before they're born. I wouldn't be able to tell you the condition of Jonas's contract. I didn't even know he was originally from Serene. But what I can tell you is the young man hasn't seen his parents since he was a small child. And ever since, he's been a Nought. Our ships are his home. We are his only family. Be back soon, Captain. You see anyone else who might be able to help us? Anyone who's not a nought? Oh, how I would like my father to be implicated in this sordid business. Our old teacher must surely know what's going on here. Let's go talk to him. Your Highness, I'm happy to see you. Your absence this morning worried both your father and me. Come now, Sir de Corsillon. My father may have been angry, outraged, or disappointed, but he's never worried about me. I'm sad to have caused you any worry, though. Would you believe that I was rotting away in a sinister jail, guarded by thugs ready to kill me? Though still seeing double from last night's drink, I was preparing an ingenious escape plan when... Ta-da! My dear cousin jumped up out of nowhere and saved me. I'm quite the fairy tale damsel in distress. You might have refrained from the company of bandits the night before such an important departure. Take away the risk and halve the pleasure, de Corsillon. It is the salt of life. Hmm. I fear that some of my teachings have been misunderstood. But you wanted to ask me something, de Sade? I've had a word with Lady Fontaine. You must know her. That rich family that lives near the docks. She told me a strange story about her son who was a cabin boy on our ship. She said that he was taken when he was a child due to some contract with the Nords. Who was a cabin boy? Do you mean he's no longer one? They took him back to bring him home. Well, that is very unpleasant news, De Sade. We need to do all we can to bring the boy back to his ship. Since time immemorial, there has always been a certain price to pay for the services of the Nords. Children born on their ships belong to them. It's the rule of the sea. But certain contracts are so important that they also require children to be offered in exchange. From time to time, the congregation has passed such a cord and certain noble families had to give their children up. Are you telling me that the Fontaines lost their son because of some agreement signed between my uncle and the Nords? Um, no. That pact ended a long time ago. This cabin boy couldn't have been a part of that contract. But Sir Fontaine has made a fortune trading with the Alliance, uh, via ships. Do you mean he would have offered up his own son in exchange for wealth? Well, he probably did it before the birth of the child, and regretted it afterwards. But that is of little importance. What counts most is that you bring the boy back to the Norts as quickly as possible. Breaking a contract with the seafarers has always cost us dearly. Our nation could feel it in its coffers. I will do my best. 
A father selling his own son for a few boat rides. For ugly, that is ugly. Lady Fontaine didn't seem to have any knowledge of that detail. That could be of use to us. Excuse me, madam, but I haven't quite finished my inquiry yet. If you would be so courteous, I would like you to leave. I have told you all that I have to say. Come on now, stop lying. Jonas was taken away by force against his will by armed men. <sighs> that is not true. Completely false. He... Enough! With every word, you are a step closer to a prison cell. Prison? But what would be the charges? Kidnapping. Whether Jonas is your son or not, he is a naught that you kidnapped and locked up. In the eyes of the prince, you have committed a crime that puts the interests of the congregation at great risk. I beg of you, Your Excellency. Have mercy on a poor mother who is looking only to recover her child. We didn't kidnap our own son. And if you need to speak with him to be convinced, please do. He's in our warehouse near the coin guard plaza next to the canal i am certain that once you have heard his account you will see the tragedy in our predicament and help us i regret threatening that woman you didn't have a choice she was lying and we need to find that boy Here we are. Be careful. Fontaine won't be alone. He'll have his henchmen with him. A handful of underlings don't scare us away. Right, cousin? Let's just try to remain discreet.
So it's here that our man keeps his son. <sighs> Abusive fathers. I don't have the key. Who are you? My name is the Sade. I am legate of the congregation. Your captain has sent me to find you. And were you able to convince my... my father to allow me to go free? You don't seem to be all that close to your parents. I hadn't seen them since I was five years old. I barely remember them. They find me, capture me, and lock me up in this warehouse. Hard to grow close after all that. My family is the Noughts. I am sorry for my parents, but that is the way of it now. Can I go home? Yes. You should still go and say farewell to your mother, then find your way to the ship. I'll see you there. Where is the manifest to be found? I've already been to the port authorities. They keep the official documents upstairs.
Here's the ship's manifest. We only need to add our merchandise to the list. If you wore a nought uniform and you were able to keep your mark hidden from them, they might let us in. Unless we just offered them a drink. These sailors rarely refuse one. I see where this is headed. If we drop a little soporific in their glasses, the way will be clear. I'll just need to find the proper ingredients, but it's doable. So, are you ready? Can we weigh anchor? We should be able to set sail with the tide, as agreed upon. My cabin boy, Jonas, is back on ship. I have you to thank, I imagine. You do. It's a rather sad affair, and though solved, leaves a broken family behind. All we can do is plot a course. No one tells the wind what to do. I do thank you. I didn't think you'd go to so much trouble for a cabin boy. Your actions bring you honor. Permission to board the ship. We are ready. Certainly. But keep in mind that we'll be at sea for several months. If you have any farewells to make or any final business to put into order, now is the time. No, my house is in order. We are ready to embark. Perfect. Follow me.
I am so eager to discover Tear Freddy. My isle, my new city. You'll need to arm yourself with patience. The voyage will be long. I've been told the trip lasts months. And they say the place is full of gigantic creatures, as big as buildings. That's right. I heard a rumor the Norts even brought one back in one of their ships. I doubt that. The Norts are strange, but they're not idiots. The beast is awoken! Those conniving, pistol-stilling, bridge-building liars. The creature was supposed to be out for days. They'll pay for this. What the hell manner of cargo are you transporting? Help! We need ropes! We must contain it! Help! Come now. Let's send them a hand. How do you fare? Fine, fine. It is dead. Are you wounded? I'm well. Your lessons have proven effective. I've never seen a beast this size. It's quite extraordinary. Cousin, what a fight. You were illustrious. I'm not of the same mind. I had the feeling it was already weakened. I did nothing more than finish it off. Your humility remains a constant. But believe me, that battle was absolutely epic.
gentlemen. Your cousin's enthusiasm is most impressive. And this journey is his long-awaited chance to prove his worth. He is a demanding father. More likely, he's just happy to be free of this hornet's nest. I definitely know I am. That's certain. Gentlemen, I am Constantine of House Orsay, your new governor. I have no idea what sort of ceremony you've prepared for my arrival, but I would gladly skip it, so... <laughs> indeed, indeed, these are rather peculiar customs. I, I see, I see, it seems you are quite intent on serving me a drink. Hello? Cat got your tongue, gentlemen? Would it be those annoying beaks? <laughs> I am truly sorry these doctors should have shown a greater measure of courtesy. Thank you, dear doctors. Move along. Go and trouble the noughts. Pay no attention to them. Instead, just drink. The long voyages at sea require the appropriate treatment as soon as we land. According to our scientists, without fortifiers, you might catch your death, and that would be quite regrettable. I should have chosen death. This concoction is liquid torture. I would think that they would have warned you on the ship. No, not in the slightest. And you must be Lady Morange, my predecessor. You are correct. There you are! To your health. Aha! You got your dose of bile too. Allow me to present to you Lady Morange, and to you, my dear lady, my most trusted cousin. Where is the captain? He seems to be preoccupied with some sort of admiral. Indeed. Then I will have to thank him later for this most marvelous voyage. Excellency, lead me to the palace, I beg you. And, whenever possible, go by way of all the intriguing alleyways. I am dying with impatience to discover this new city. My city! Uh, your Excellency, we must wait for our escort. No need. Have no fear, for I am here to defend you, my lady. I've been scullied. How so? My admiral laid me off. My cousin was nonetheless delighted with your services. I hope there was no misunderstanding. None, I'm sure of it. She just ordered me to give you any assistance you might need. This request doesn't seem to please you. Don't take offense, but it's not pleasant for a captain to abandon his ship. 
In any case, here I am at your service for a while. 